Okay, so this is the final review for Dishonored 2. I played it all the way through, and it was interesting. My first experience, like most games I play, I have a I have initial trouble like the learning curve, getting over that that first that first hump of difficulty, and getting acclimated into the game. <clears throat> And you get more abilities, you really start to get in the flow of the game. That that was typical here, where the first couple of levels I was trying to find my feet. I wasn't doing things uh, properly. It was messy. I was getting by. I was getting through, but it was really causing frustration. I think if I had to play it a second time, I would have done a lot better job in those first levels, and it wouldn't have been so frustrating. But that's typical in any game. Um, but as soon as I got my abilities, like the slow time, um, it really went from difficult to easy. Because if I ever got into trouble, I could just use slow time and just kill everybody. So it was it was a bit challenging, but it wasn't really hard because you always had that that get out of jail free card if things go bad. The, the slow time, and over time you get you get a bunch of uh, abilities like grenades and a whole bunch of other tools on your tool belt that really help you uh, get out of tough situations that you really don't have in the beginning. So that the beginning is always the hardest part. As you progress in the game, you get a lot more abilities to help you out for these some sticky situations. Um, so I would have really liked in the beginning if I could have felt, you know, if I could have had the ability to use my abilities in creative ways in order to solve problems but uh but I was really limited to like playing without any abilities which was really hard um one one part of the really sticks out in my mind is is the second level with the clockwork guys where it's really like you're in a hallway there's really no you can't really use your teleport or any other abilities in order to get past it you just gotta you, you know the only way to really get through the level it's just to kill everybody. Um, it's just it just puts you in a rough situation in the first where you you can't really uh, do the level creatively. But by the end of the like the seventh level in the palace, I had the I had the the teleport and I can teleport around and really you know really get um, get past the guards or escape in a creative way, and that's. That's what I found in the first game that I was looking for right in the beginning of the second game, but I didn't really see that. So, uh, overall, the game has really nice graphics, like you can see in this 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 picture here. Um, just the level of environmental details on level with uh, like Bioshock. Um, it's just really great. It's like I would give that part of the game an A as far as like environment design and detail. And artwork that that part of the game is an A. As far as gameplay goes, um, it does work. It feels a little rough and unpolished, but you can you can use your abilities in creative ways uh, to to get to your objective or to dispatch enemies. Um, so one of the downsides is like what I found is is that the game really encourages you to explore the environments, but at the same time you're in conflict with trying not to get spotted by the, the enemy. So it's kind of like a conflicting design. Like the only way to like actually because you want to explore and get loot, which makes your, your life easier, but the only way to actually do that is just to kill all the enemies so you could actually know where things are, because if you're trying to stealth around enemies and go in little corners and find stuff, the chances are you're going to get spotted. If you're spotted once, they're all going to come around. And if you're in an interior and there's nowhere to escape to, if you're in an exterior, like a city, you can escape. Like the palace, you can escape with your uh, your, your 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 blink. But if you're in an in, enclosed environment, there's really no place to go. And you just kind of have to fight your way through, through it. And that makes it really tough, too, like like a new player, like you're fighting clockwork guys, where they're just really hard to kill. You need explosives. If you don't have explosives, you know, you're trying to fight those guys, it's just impossible. 
So that was a really rough part of the game. Um, as far as the story goes, I mean, it's it's very generic. It, it works for a story. It's not really the greatest. I would give the story like a B minus. Uh, it's not like, you know, anything epic. It works, but uh, as far as the NPCs and the characters go, uh, they have a little bit of personality, but not much, you know. They're very forgettable. Um, so maybe a C plus there. Uh, as far as so the game, this game, I can understand with the level of detail they put in the it, into the levels. You're not going to have like a 20 game level. So this game was relatively short, which I kind of appreciate since I played a really large last game. But um, but what you can do to get more value out of it. I almost want to play this game again a second time as Emily and experience her separate set of abilities and really maybe notch it up a level of difficulty and maybe do the DLC on top of that, you know, to really fully experience the game. But I got a good dose of this game by playing Corvo on the first first playthrough. There's a lot of things I would have done differently if I had to play it again, but uh but overall, when I started this game, I was really frustrated. I was like, oh, this game is like a C minus. This game is too much. But when I, I really got the, the set couple, the, the, I progressed to the next levels and I got uh, better acclimated with my abilities, that I really started to get into the flow. Like I felt, like I felt with the first game, it really, things really start to click. You know, you can really use your abilities and really get things done without getting killed all the time. Uh, and I, yeah, the, the, and the game really improved at that point in my, my mind. Uh, uh, this game also has one segment, which I give points to for creativity. There was like a time t when you're in the mansion, there's a time turner. You can go back and forth between time in order to get through the mansion. So that was a bit of creativity on the part of the design. I, that's, that's one part of this game that sticks out in my mind. Like, yeah, that's part of the a game that's worth playing. Um, so, overall, um, this game was good. Um, I, if I had to recommend it to someone, I said, yeah, yeah, if you, you know, I'd recommend playing it. Um, as far as a letter grade goes, um, I think B plus is a little bit too low. It, for me, it's the whole game is somewhere between B plus and A minus. Um, I almost think B plus is fair. Uh, it's almost like it's just missing that little bit of something for me to get to the A range, the A minus range. But I think it definitely earns a B plus. Um, I mean, if I had to split hairs, I like maybe it can get a minus, but it'd have to be a little. There would have to be a little bit more something to the game. But I think a B plus is is a fair grade for this game. Um, uh, as far as that goes, I think I've covered everything. Uh, I mean, at the end of this, I can see there's some replay value. I, I almost, I think I'm gonna pick this up for my collection and then get the DLC and see what that's about and replay it with uh, the other character because they have a whole different set of abilities. So that might give some fresh life to the game and kind of uh, give you the satisfaction of completing the game in a much more uh, satisfying way instead of just hacking your way through it. Or maybe even try the non-lethal way. That Yeah, if you try the, the non-lethal content, like try to do as a challenge, like, okay, I'm going to try to do this level without killing anybody, and without killing the main, that would be definitely, so there is a bit of replay value to this game. Um, but I don't know if I'm actually going to replay this game again. Uh, but it is definitely uh, worth playing and worth buying. So B+. Plus, uh, and then we'll be back with our next game. I'm not sure if it's going to be God of War 3 or what. But we have to choose our next game now. So, uh. Thanks to all who uh, watched along this playthrough series, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next time.